Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24. Marco. Sean. It's our uh, favorite tradition. Yep. It's that, uh, it's that time of year. The years, the time has changed, but it's still that time of year. It's getting more and more summery because it goes towards the summer, but because it's in San Francisco, we don't really know the weather, what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, keep you guys know. guessing. Yeah, exactly. guessing. Right. That's, my, that's my favorite saying is I, I can't count the number of San Francisco jackets that I've purchased, leaving, <laughs> leaving mine at home and realizing I need another one. <laughs> yeah, you haven't learned yet. After, I haven't learned yet. Let me, let me, let me do for another. RSA conference, how many have you done? 20? Uh, 20, yeah, 20, 20 um, years of ours. I'm, at, I'm right. at about 10, so I'm there a baby go. compared to you. <laughs> well, we're going to yeah. go again. There we go. We're, we're off, off and running. This is our Chats on the Roads RSA Conference 2024, and Cecilia Marinier is on. How are you? So good to see you. I am... I am well and getting excited about right. RSA conference. Us too, man. We are ready on that road to <laughs> RSA conference. We are there on that journey. Many people ex are excited about that. I mean, we had our first conversation with Linda and Brita, and so that's that's in the in the book. And then, uh, like I said, Aerospace Village, which was a lot of energy, as you know, uh, you know, those guys. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the sandbox uh, in this uh, conversation as well. And then uh, who else we had on already, Sean? Uh, Jessica. Jessica Robinson. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was a very good conversation, wow. too. So and many and more to come. Tons lined up and I have a list about it doesn't even fit on the screen. It's <laughs> longer than the screen of uh, people that I want to chat with and a number of sponsors also uh, telling some of their stories soon. So, but we're here to talk about the college day, the scholar program, the sandbox, the innovation, all the people that do all kinds of cool things, uh, new and innovative, young and old, uh, all over the place. So, not just talks. We talked. We did a lot of that with uh, with Linda and Britta, but so, so yeah. Why don't you um before we get into a lot of the program stuff? I'm sure people who have listened to us before know who you are, but your your current role, some of the things you look after as part of RSA conference now. Yeah, so I am the minder of the all of the innovation programs and anything that deals with scholars. So I like to refer to myself as the one that's kind of thinking through the future. And, uh, and bringing that into what's happening at RSA conference. We have a lot going on as Linda and Britta were covering. It's gonna be an outrageous year. Really excited with all of the different people coming, uh, sharing their knowledge. But what I work on is specifically on the contests, on the early stage expo where we bring out the startups and where we have the security scholars and they're gonna have a pitch off. So I'm happy to talk about any of that. You let me know where you want to guide this conversation, and I will jump right in. How about we start with, um, I, I feel perhaps we leave the, uh, the the scholar stuff to the end a lot. So let, let's start there this time. Okay. So as RSA Conference is committed to that future generation, the cyber warriors, and we started a program back in 2016. Yes, Sean, that is how long I have been doing this. <laughs> Um, but from 2016, we've been bringing in around 30 to 70, 80 students each year. Right now we're settling in around 60 because we found it to be a nice size class. They come from over 40 schools. The schools represent all different kinds of backgrounds and technical areas of focus. Um, and the students themselves also, so they might be bachelors, they might be masters, they might be PhDs. They're coming, they could be veterans and coming back into the field, or there are people that are just getting started and they're just getting into this into cybersecurity as we speak. But these people were all selected by their directors as the future cyber warrior for, to represent their school. And it, not necessarily your you know, person that has a 4.0, it's the person that's gonna make a difference or really be impacted by coming to RSA conference and meeting all of the experts that come to the 
to the conference and having those kind of really critical conversations and the cross fertilization of ideas. And we're trying to build cohort groups where they can connect with one another so that as we look into the future, we are building a, a, a group of people who can reach out to each other, learn from each other, build each other up and be there for one another. It's all about community. You know, I want to talk about this because we make it, we're making fun about how many Sean has done, I've done, you've been doing this for many years. There is a lot of different generation now um, in this industry. And so talking about community, talking about having those first day when you have the loyalty that have been there many times to connect with the people that come for the first time, then you got the student. I mean, you are creating the future of this industry. and. I want to connect with the theme because it's my job, so I have to talk about the art. Plus, plus it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> right? Plus, it connects with the creating the future, the art of possible. So how, how do you feel about this year theme and how much it fits in all you do? So I have not seen, and shame on me, because I didn't see what Britta and Linda were talking about. But we just had a technical technological revolution with artificial intelligence and generative AI that came through two years ago, maybe not even, maybe 18 months when you think about when OpenAI actually came to the fore. And as someone who's leading the contests on both the Innovation Sandbox contest, which is old and established, and Launchpad, which is really looking at the at, at companies that are coming up and not quite ready for prime time, but that they're just going out and uh, pitching to venture capitalists. I'm really excited about the changes that we're seeing in how artificial intelligence can actually improve the security team's productivity. And that to me is why Art of the Possible is really this year gonna be heavily focused on artificial intelligence for sure. But I can tell you that the contests have a lot of that that theme behind it. Yeah, and it, it, it's interesting because I've been in attending the conference at different levels. So I've I've been at a vendor for many years in the expo hall, uh, wearing comfy shoes and and uh, wearing out my back and having meeting loads of folks. And then as an independent journalist and now running uh, ITSP magazine. And what's interesting to, to Marco's point is that the, the people, there's a lot of old faces that I recognize, a lot of folks that I've known over the years, right? Yeah. But last year was a, a big shift for me in the number of new people everywhere, speaking yeah. uh, in the expo hall, on stage. And, and it, it's striking me because in the last couple of conversations I've had over the past few days, there's this idea of, I know being agile in software development is important, being agile in our security controls and, and, and our posture and how we map that to the business is important. That's nothing new, but I'm starting to see these new generations of companies and people leading new things and investors coming in uh, from a different angle and bringing in different insights. And it, it's it's really super cool. And I know AI has a lot of, a lot of attention and I think some of the finalists in the in the uh, the, the, the sandbox the top 10 finalists right innovation sandbox mm -hmm. uh, are, are rooted in, in AI if I'm not mistaken um, but talk to me a little bit about about kind of the the change in who's participating in some of the programs you're working on the companies coming to bear and how they present themselves I don't know I see a cycle that it, it isn't just a cycle it's actually a growing to, to become even bigger and, and new, better? Well, I think going back to how you see the adversaries being nimble and agile, and we need to be as agile and nimble as possible. So not only, you know, I, I was talking about the productivity on the one side that artificial intelligence, the promise of that can bring, but also uh, there's companies creating solutions to counter AI applications that are being used by the adversaries. And I think, you know, we've heard about the, the perils and the, and, the, uh, and the positive of what AI can bring. I think, I'm hoping that in this conference, when people come, they're able to experience different experts' point of views, different perspectives 
on how that is going to manifest over the next two years. And that I think it will be really telling about the industry. And it does allow for new voices to come in, you know, over the last 10 years. And I'm Marco, I'm sure you could talk to this too, because you've been witnessing this is like, if you think about the trends that we've seen of the, the new ways that cybersecurity touches our lives. So 10 years ago, people didn't even know what cybersecurity was. And then we have, you know, privacy people getting involved. Then we have sociologists getting involved. And now we have people who are coming in who are data scientists and completely different than your traditional computer science individual who's building something, but they're actually coming in to extract and to find out and, and tease out what they can learn from it from both like, you know, trying to find anomalies or finding um, other ways to be more productive. So I think that, you know, we've always talked about how cybersecurity is just broad and it just takes in anybody. And whether you're later in your career or early in your career, there's a place for you to come and find yourself and find your peers. And that is part of what we try to build is this whole part about the community is finding ways to build connections and to challenge one another and to and to feel good about being with one another. So when I think about those companies, and I, I don't ever speak about my top 10, because actually, to be honest, they're all my babies. I've said this in several years in a row. You guys know how I feel. Well, I pick, love pick, one. pick one. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think that, you know, if you go check them out, there are some veterans in there. There are some people that are coming up with some new ideas. Launchpad this year, really, really cutting edge. In my opinion, like I'm looking at some of those companies and how they're approaching the problems that they're trying to solve. And that comes out on Friday. So April 5th is when we, well, it doesn't come out Friday, it comes out next week, but we are choosing the companies on Friday. And I just think that when you see some of the, what they're doing in that space, you're gonna be surprised. So I, I actually am really hopeful for the future. I, like I said, there's lots of different people, different places and different ideas that all can come together. It doesn't matter where you come from and find yourself here. Well, wow, yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I felt pretty out of out of place the first time that Sean <laughs> dragged me to RSA that's, you're, conference. You're just out of place with me. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, staying attached to you and going around while you were running from one meeting to another it was the only thing that actually didn't create confusion in my head because it's so big. There's so so many people, but. But I did feel like, you know, my background is in sociology and political science. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? And now, as you said, the themes have always been more and more human, human centric intersection, convergence of all of these. And it comes down to be, you know, a lot of social engineering and a lot of psychology. And, and you said all of that. So yes. do we see this? And let's talk, let's talk about the villages because this conversation is a sandbox. It came out yesterday with, with Liz, Liz Worth, and the, which is going to yes. have a panel there. And it's about society. It's about mm -hmm. flying people securely, going to space, satellite that affect our life. It's it's not just something in a silos out there in the in the IT world. It's it's our life. So the villages, I think that's where you can see this. I agree. I mean, I think that, of course, if you're in the law track or you're in the privacy track, I think there's other tracks or yeah. sessions or places that you will definitely find your like the more human element involved in this. But I I like the sandbox and I know you guys love the sandbox, too. So mm -hmm. just for those to make sure it's very clear, because some people might be new to this podcast and everybody's going, what happened with the naming problem here? You have the innovation sandbox contest, which is really just focused on 10 uh, entrepreneurs pitching to five incredible judges and that happens on Monday and then we flip part of that space around and we create this really cool hangout area where you can meet your friends and it's designed to be very approachable and there's amazing people come in and volunteer from all of the different villages so you guys had the aerospace village on but this year we're bringing an AI, AI village which we did not have last year we have AppSec coming back. We love those guys. Cloud Security is new. Cloud Security Village. Uh, Dark Arts, ICS Sandbox, IoT. These guys are my staples. They're my friends. They're incredibly good people that show up every year and they're there to give back. Because again, like this is what's so awesome about our, our industry 
is that people care and they're giving back. And this is the sandbox is absolutely a place where you can witness that happening. Oh, but the last one, there's two I want to tell you about too. One is called physical security sandbox. And that's really fun because you're going to get to like take your little cards and with the RFID and hack that <laughs> getting into hotel rooms. That will be fun. And the other one is the INL village, INL, um, the Idaho National Labs is bringing actually an escape room. So that will be really fun if you want to come and play in the escape room and get in there and, uh, and do some more hands-on activities. Additionally, we'll have some really cool research talks on the stage. We have a coffee bar. We have like a place to sit down and don't knock the place to sit down at RSA conference. It's very important. You got couches. It's very comfortable. I expect you to see you all there, actually. I'm inviting you all. You're my friends. Come to my lounge. <laughs> They're very comfy chairs. I think, uh, I don't know how many pillows you lost from last year. <laughs> Take it with you. It's okay. They're all branded <laughs> RSA conference. You can have them. <laughs> I think, I think a few went missing last year. Not for me. I was tempted that I didn't do it, but, uh, no, it is, it's a super comfy place and a great place to chat and meet new people. And of course we, we love a lot of the folks that, uh, that are there as well. So the, Kind of going kind of to the naming part of it. So there's the innovation sandbox. There's the contest, yeah. Uh, the the yeah innovation sandbox contest, and then there's the uh, innovation sandbox. No, it's just no, called sandbox. Just sandbox. There we go. <laughs> it's a hard one because you know we played on the words for sandbox right. for the sandbox area where the villages are because that's actually like what they're trying to do. It's an it's a playing space. Right. You know, we're going to have a cool game in the AI village is a Gandalf game where you can, you know, play against an LLM and, and like learn about more about it. But a hands on activities, super fun with like a little cartoon character and like you get to different levels. And that's what you're supposed to be doing in the sandbox. And that's why we didn't want to change it. Right. And innovation sandbox contest. I mean, my God, it's 19 that's years old. I know. If you think about it, 80 acquisitions. Did you guys see how many, how much money these companies have had yeah. invested in them? 13 and a half billion dollars. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right. It's a great place to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the contest part. And that's only one day, one afternoon, you know, very intense, super fun pitching. And then you have the fun zone on, it opens actually with cyber ops and that's on Tuesday night. And you know, who's going to be on the stage then is going to be John Strand and Jason who are from Black Hat, Black Hills. And they'll be doing their back stores and breaches game. It's a game that they play <laughs> and you get to play too. So we'll feed you. You'll have fun. You can come check out the space. Love it. Love it. And then the, the other one that I was, not doing a great job getting to is the launch pad. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Which is, uh, that's more of a shark tank style event, right? Tell, yep. tell us about that. So launch pad this year has three veteran dredges, Enrique Salem from Bain Capital, Sarah Gao from, who is a gray luck veteran who started her own VC called conviction and Barmak Mefta, who you probably might know from Alien Vault, but he uh, he joined with Ted Schlein and Kevin Mandia, and they built Ballistic Ventures. And that pitch zone is having the entrepreneurs who are still developing their product come out and give a five-minute pitch to the these judges. And at the end, the judges are just kind of like people who come to the audience will be able to see something cool in the new technology. But they're also going to learn, like, what do the VCs care about? Like, why are what are the questions that they're asking? And learn a little bit more about the companies themselves. So it's a, a different slant than ISB, which is really looking for ISB, excuse me, is Innovation Sandbox Contest, which is on Monday. And that one is looking for a technology that's going to change the uh, cybersecurity industry in the next 12 months. And when you think about it, like I, I can name off, you know, Phantom, for example, they were hardly known when they got on our sandbox stage. And within 12 months, everybody was like, oh my gosh, I have to have Phantom. Or I could say the same about Big ID or Exonius. Uh, and recently Talon, who, um, who was just bought by Palo Alto Networks. So they were up there. We have uh, Hidden Layers. It's going to come back and say how their last year has been. But it's a pretty amazing contest uh, for that. And it's different than Launchpad. So I'm trying to make sure I'm delineated. Am I good? Do I, did I do a good enough job? Do you guys know the difference? 
what to expect? Well, I think the, the best way to know is to go to each one, <laughs> experience them. That's the, for me, that's, you have to be part of it. You have to be yeah. there. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, as you're mentioning all these company names, I'm putting faces to all of them thinking, oh yeah. <laughs> I remember these guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody that gets in the top 10 has uh, uh, just, just getting there is already, I've already heard from the top 10 the stories of how much that's changed to the inbounds that they're getting, how many people are like, Oh, they're paying attention to this company. They're like, Oh, who are they? And it's a really important process that the judges are great. You know, one of the things that I do want to just emphasize briefly is the judges that work for ISB work really hard and they have a lot of companies that they have to go through because there's just so much good stuff coming into the, the contest. So many great submissions but we have different perspectives of like what will make a good company so we take the venture capitalists we have a large company security strategist in dory door who is at checkpoint so that would be somebody that might buy the company later you have uh paul kotcher who's an entrepreneur so can they actually build the company and sell it or build the company and take it ipo and he has that perspective because he was successful in doing that you have a CISO and buyer in Nazreen Raze, who is the SVP and CISO at Verizon. So she is the buyer of this. Uh, and then you have Nilu, uh, Nilu Howe, who, Razi Howe, who actually has been on this panel for a really long time, but what her perspective and is, she's just so incredibly good. She is also a venture capitalist, but she sits on the national security agencies uh, board and she understands where big threats are coming from and because of that like that perspective from the government is just always important to thinking about you know where are companies where will companies be successful so anyways each of them have their own perspective I didn't mention Ashim and you guys know Ashim and he's from Greylock and he's just fabulous so um, I, I feel very blessed that we have such a strong bench of judges and they will be able to identify or they have identified the top 10 and they already talked about me was on another interview with me and she's like, oh my gosh, this year is going to be so hard. <laughs> there are so many good companies. All right. So here, here's the question for the person that foresee the future, which is you. Okay. I mean, you have your hands in all of this. I mean, in the students, right. in the new coming in, in the people being there and they're judging the VC that the, you know what they're looking for. And then you see this company with the new technology you mentioned, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and generative AI and how it's going to probably be one of the big game changer. So the, the tough question for me is if you had to put it in into one bucket, right and say okay this is kind of the trend this is where it's going this is what the vc are looking for that is the kind of technology is it really just ai because it's hard for me to believe i know it's the buzzword and, and all of that <laughs> and everything has to be ai in it but i also think that it's much more complex than that so what what's your thought on that what are we looking for in one word, I think it's it's plastics. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's actually from The Graduate. It's a very old movie. Um, but but what I'll say is this instead is that um, that I agree with you, Marco. It you know what it, artificial intelligence is just a tool of how to deliver. So what we're seeing is it's just accelerating some of the great solutions that are coming out in the very the different areas of focus, whether it's cloud security or you know application security or risk and compliance. Um, I think that you're, that it is going to be the buzzword right now because it's just changing how we actually think and do things differently. But long-term, it's not, it will just be one more way. It will be like a language that we use instead of it being a completely new technology that, well, maybe it is changing everything, but. I'll, I'll leave it there. I think that that is what I would say. It's just it's just a tool it kit in the kit that the uh, entrepreneurs are using in order to make the what they were actually focused on and solving that problem just more productive, more better, better at it. And, and I, I agree, and I'm glad that you said this because it's like if you think about the computer, right? Right. It, what, what do you do with it? What? It's right. what you do with it that makes more of a difference than... <laughs> same thing with a smartphone, the same thing with... So AI is a, an amazing instrument, an amazing tool, but it's uh, it's what happened around it. It's the idea that 
that comes by reflecting on what can you do with it, I guess. Sean, do you agree? Do you have any idea on that? I don't agree there? with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Sean. All right. He's going to go back to plastics. That's what I, I want to say. I am like, going back to plastics. I'm going to use that, actually. <laughs> now, here, here's my thought, and I don't know if it makes any sense because I often don't. But uh, so I think AI impacts a lot of stuff. Yes. The way we detect, the way we identify, the way we respond, the way we communicate uh, up and down the stack to the executive team down to analysts sitting in the sock. Um, and so I, I think it has a far reaching impact. Absolutely. But I don't, where, where I'm, I'm hoping at some point we'll see a, a change is we'll see something else besides identify, detect and respond. Some big thing <laughs> gets introduced like that where we completely look at the way we tackle this problem today differently. And a AI may uncover something there because it's going to be mm -hmm. analyzing all this data and surface something in a way that we, our current brains can't picture. Right. So it may, it may ultimately come up with the thing that I think that I'm thinking will happen, but I haven't seen that happen yet. That's my thought. Okay, I'm I'm game. I'm open. I, I won't put any money on like you know one way or the other because it is radically different than it had been two years ago. Like what what people are doing with it is ha, is changing. And I did I have seen some really cool applications. <laughs> you guys, I really recommend going and seeing the launch pad. I really like yeah. it. Yeah. I like these guys. I like the ISB guys too. Seriously, I think you guys are gonna. Uh, I hope to see everybody there. It, it's a it's worth it to get that really clean snapshot as to, you know, some of the technology that are being applied in this way. And maybe we're not there quite yet, Sean, and maybe we are. Maybe you'll see something on that stage. You'll be like, wow, all right. She knows well, something well, that we don't know. Why? Well, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, there's lots, lots of secrets, I think. But uh, no, I, I'm hopeful that there will be something that triggers a thought that we, that we need to look at this slightly differently. Yep. So, uh, so I'm with sure that, we'll, I'm sure we'll see something. With yeah. that, we are excited to be there. Everybody that is coming is very excited to be there. Now even more. People that cannot come, they still follow us and all our conversation because we're going to share with, uh, right. with everybody what we see, the people we meet, the story, like we are already doing right now. And we are very, very excited about this. But I would like for you, Cecilia, to take two minutes to put all your energy into the call for people to come to RSA conference and discover the future there. Go. Okay, wow. So, you know, <laughs> no pressure. Here because that's exactly what I do for telling all of the, the companies that they have to pitch. They have three minutes. So when you guys put that buzzer on me, you'd be like, <laughs> um, but honestly, like it, in all fairness, if you can make it, I think you will be very excited about just our industry. I think it's such a great refreshing place to go find people that are working hard on the really complex problems we're all trying to solve together and you find your people. I think that if you can't make it, I think following Marco and Sean on, the, on their journey, looking at what's coming out of all of the press releases and all the other pieces around conference is equally as important. I know, you know, we talk frequently and it's kind of funny because Hugh, who is the program chair for RSA conference, and he also is the MC for, for Innovation Sandbox Contest, he frequently talks about how um, like the agenda for parties around RSA conference is almost as challenging as getting the sessions on your, on your uh, calendars for each of the different sessions at conference. And it's because everybody wants to see one another. There's just so much going on and it's a place to connect. So if you can't connect uh, physically with us, try and find ways that you can connect with us virtually afterwards, follow us, and then try to figure a way that we can maybe get you there in another year. But this year, going to be epic. It's going to be the GOAT. I know Linda's already talked about it. So I'm excited. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm going to leave it there. You guys have to go do a little research. All right. Perfect. Well, the one thing we didn't mention during our chat with Linda and Britta was this is very much in the art part <laughs> of the equation. Is uh, it Alicia Keys? Alicia Keys. <laughs> yes. 
So yeah. tell, tell us about her before we wrap. Okay. Hey, you guys, honestly, I have been here working for 10 years and this is the most fun way to finish this event and to have Alicia Keys feel so blessed to have her. She was just actually on at the Super Bowl. So those of you that watch the Super Bowl, those of you who don't, uh, check her out. She has amazing songs. She's an a incredible voice. But more importantly, she's a great voice for women. And I, I say that lovingly to both you, Sean and Marco, because I know you guys care about this, but uh, just an incredible artist. So yes, she's awesome. And we also have Ted Lasso coming. He's going to be there. So come check him out. Uh, and then a couple of surprises that are still to be announced that you'll have to follow. <sighs> come on. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can totally I can't. I want to though. Sean, trust me. I'm like, oh, I just want to tell people. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, well, we will be there and we will enjoy the surprise as we uncover it or experience okay. it like everybody else, I guess. Awesome. So, there we have it. Awesome. Well, I am excited. Uh, we are all excited. We want people to stay excited to carry it for the entire month to come until the, the event starts and then event yeah i agree with you cecilia carry it after that it's uh whatever you take either you're there or not all this innovation this idea it could be next year could be yours idea and and it's all about the community which is very much what the art of possible is related to, to and very much about a lot of the programs you you yeah, look after exactly right there's a, there's a space for everybody in in sandboxes <laughs> so so everybody stay tuned follow cecilia visit us come join us in ours at our a conference san francisco in may starts may 3rd if i'm not mistaken and may 6th, uh may 6th, may 6th may 6th there we go i'm i'm arriving i can't Maybe. see my camera <laughs> i just gave some most sent away there we go i'm arriving may 3rd <laughs> <laughs> You're arriving May 3rd because that's actually when you got to get started. So uh, we'll all see you around May 3rd. We'll be hanging out with Sean and Marco. Oh, you yeah. guys can come join us. We won't open the doors for conference yet, but we'll be there. <laughs> yes, we will we'll be, be there. We, we will be there getting getting ready. But uh, stay tuned. Lots, lots to do there. Lots to do as we take our journey. Chats on the road to RSA conference. Thanks, everybody. Cecilia, thank you. Thank Marco. you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. See you Super soon. fun, as always. Bye-bye. Bye. Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24.